Get back to YouTube. Happy Saturday, my hackers. Yeah, guys, I want to apologize for no picture in picture. Uh, thing is that I still have a bit of a migraine, so yeah, hopefully you guys understand that. And this battle was against XBGX Enigma. Uh, his channel link will be down in the description, so make sure to go check him out as he leads off with Crawdon. I am going to be leading off with my Crazy on my Choice Bender Ferret. Now, right off the bat, I thought that my Brick Break would have been an easy one hit KO considering that it was super effective, but I did underestimate Crawdon's natural bulk, which means he's just barely able to live and he's going to get off a free a Dragon Dance, giving him plus one speed and plus one attack, allowing him to easily outspeed and just annually rape my Ferret, which really does suck because I wanted to be able to use my Ferret uh, more later on in this battle, but. Oh well, what can you do? So, I'm gonna switch on to my Mandibuzz, which is the best thing I have to be able to deal with this Crawdon after plus one. And even though I am special debulky, I am thankfully uh, able to live this waterfall and he does not get a flinch, which will allow me to get off a free roost, bringing me back up to around 90% HP. Now, I know if he doesn't get uh, maximum damage next turn or and he does not flinch me, I will be able to live the waterfall and get off a free roost. And this Crawdon will be gone thanks to the Life Orb recoil. But unfortunately, he does make a very good play and actually goes for a second Dragon Dance, predicting me to go for the Roost. And at this point, I am a bit scared because now I have to switch in something on my team as Death Fodder. And I saw from the team preview that my Sand Slash is possibly the most useless thing for anything on his team. So that was the uh, safest and best bet of a switch to switch in on this Crawdon. So yeah, luckily, thanks to the Life Orb, it is going to be an easy double down. As I'm going to take this opportunity to go onto my Rotom as he goes down to his clay doll because I guess he just wants to get up his rocks right off the right off the bat because I did lose my rapid spinner. So he does go for that as I go for my substitute. Now next turn I am going to go for the shadow ball hoping that I will be able to one hit KO the clay doll because I do not want him to break my substitute if he does carry the ice beam. But he actually ends up having the sunny day which I found to be very odd considering that clay doll never ever carry sunny day. As this turn, I'm just going to kill him off with the Shadow Ball. Now, since I am behind a Substitute, I have no worry at all on anything that he wants to bring in. As he brings in Tangrowth. Now, since he did outspeed me, that automatically tells me that he is Chlorophyll. As my Shadow Ball is going to be doing a very, very good chicken and damage. Now, since my Substitute was broken and Tangrowth is going to be faster than me in the Sun, I am going to be forced to switch out to my Mandibuzz, which is the best thing I have to deal with the Tangrowth. Borrowing that he does not have Ancient Power, which I don't believe Tangrowth really tend to carry and since he already showed me hidden power fire i don't have to worry about hidden power rock as he does get a crit with the power whip which really does not matter whatsoever because next turn i will be able to live any hit he wants to throw at me and then get off a free roost and he actually ends up going for the growth which in sun growth raises your physical and special attack by plus two instead of plus one so he is at plus two physical attack and plus two special attack which this thing is looking to be a bit scary but nothing that my mandibus can't deal with as long as I can get a Toxic off and hopefully Roost up and he doesn't crit me, then I should be in a pretty safe spot as he does go for a Power Whip, which at plus 3, that does about 49% to my max a Special Debulky Mandibuzz. As there you saw that I actually ended up missing my Toxic, which really does suck because now I'm going to be forced to Roost up to a point where I know I can take one Power Whip and hopefully get off a Toxic because right now, uh, Mandibuzz is the best thing I have to deal with this Tangrowth. As this turn, I'm hoping if he does go for the Power Whip that he will end up missing, but he actually ends up going for the Growth which is just great because I get off a free toxic and now I don't have to take any unnecessary damage that I would have had to take with an attack that he went for now since he is at plus four I'm thinking that this uh, Tangrowth is too much to handle for my mana buzz so I'm actually going to go for the whirlwind which there you saw that that power whip did absolutely nothing but luckily for me I ended up whirlwinding him out to his Charizard so I know I can take any hit Charizard wants to throw me and I will be able to uh, roost up to full HP unfortunately he did miss the uh, focus blast which you know what in my opinion makes up for the toxic miss that I had earlier on the Tangrowth as this turn I'm going to go for the toxic because I want to whittle down the Charizard when on hindsight I probably should have gone for the Brave Bird because this turn he is going to switch out into his Gabantula and I don't know what item this Gabantula has I don't know if he's Choice Specs, Choice Scarf or Life Orb. I'm hoping that he will be Life Orb uh, because if he is then I have something that will be able to outspeed it and KO it. As this turn I am going to be forced to switch out because I know that my uh, uh, Mandibus probably won't be able to live any hit and stutter there for a bit. Sorry about that. As he actually turns out to be Life Orb 
which is just great because now next turn I can switch out into my Aerodactyl, easily outspeed the Gavantula and go straight for the Stone Edge since I am a max attack Life Orb and it is super effective on the Gavantula. But he's actually going to opt to switch out to his Tangrowth for Death Fodder, which you know what, I have no object objections about. Because as long as I have my Aerodactyl, then I have nothing to worry about his uh, Galvantula. As this turn, I am going to switch my Aerodactyl out into my Uxie because I thought that the Galay will possibly go for the Shadow Sneak and I didn't want... Uh, him to KO me as that close combat does a decent chunk of damage because the Gallade actually turns out to be Life Orb which has me thinking that maybe that's a Sword Dance Gallade as this turn since he was at minus one special defense I actually went for the Psychic unfortunately for me my Psychic just barely fails to KO the Galvantula even after the uh, Toxic Recoil damage so I am going to switch on to my Mandibuzz hoping that maybe he would go for the Bug Buzz unfortunately that is not the case and he does go straight for the Thunder annihilating Mandibuzz and it is going to be another double down. Now this turn I am going to opt to go on to my Aerodactyl. Because if he does go on to Charizard then I can easily uh, KO with the Stone Edge. But no he actually ends up going to Gallade. Which means unless I get a crit with my Earthquake then I really have no chance to KO the Gallade. And unfortunately I do not. So he's just going to finish me off with the Night Slash. And my last is a Uxie. So that is going to be Enigma's game 2-0. Uh, it would have been a 1-0 loss. But uh, he actually ends up critting me with his Night Slash because you guys know me, I have terrible luck. But uh, it was a very fun game nonetheless. Uh, GG Enigma, as I said, make sure to go check him out, guys. Uh, sorry if this narration was horrible. I know it was, trust me. But yeah, anyways, uh, like button down there, subscribe button up there. And with that, guys, I do believe I am out of here. Later.